Welcome for joining me. I am Commissioner Omar Sabir, Chairman of the Philadelphia Board of Elections. City Commissioners are a three-member bipartisan board of election officials and we oversee the election functions in Philadelphia County. To keep it simple and plain, the buck stops when it comes to voting, voter registration, voting tabulation, in Philadelphia's counties. Our forefathers in 1776 here in Philadelphia imagined something unprecedented and optimistic. There were words like freedom, democracy, liberty, justice. These words were not just a document, but a mantra a mantra that made America the most powerful country in the history of our world. Now, we the people, we are calling on every leader, every community leader, all Americans to condemn political violence here in our country of the United States of America. It has no place. Every American has the right to assemble peacefully, to express their values, to vote who they want to vote for, or to hear whatever message that they want to hear from. So my thoughts and prayers are extended to former President Donald Trump. I send my condolences to the innocent bystanders who lost their life or who have faced trauma from the events that transpired over the weekend. This election, Tuesday, November the 5th, is the most critical and the most historic election of our lifetime. And we're calling on all eligible registered voters to participate in this beautiful democracy that so many people sacrificed before us. We're on the backdrop of Octavius, Octavius Caddo, he was a man who was assassinated on election day for organizing African Americans their right to vote that was given to them by the Constitution. But sadly, Octavius Caddo was not the only person. There are names like Crispix Addicts, Megra Evers, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., four little girls who were bombed in Birmingham, Alabama, Andrew Gooden, Michael Shawanis. Vita Galizio, and their countless others. Four presidents were assassinated, and there were three attempts on former presidents' lives. So this is the issue that we're calling on Congress, from local levels, state, federal officials, to provide the resources to keep election officials safe and all elected officials safe, keep our poll workers safe, and we need historic investment and the people who oversee elections and elected officials to assure that these tragedies will not occur. The city commissioners are a three-member bipartisan board, so I'm honored to call my colleague, who's the only Republican on our board, Commissioner Seth Bluestein, to say a few words. Thank you, Chairman Sabir. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Whether attending a political rally or canvassing door to door to meet their neighbors or coming out to vote, every citizen should feel safe in having their voice heard and expressing their views in a safe political way. This should not be a democratic value or a Republican value. It is an American value. And that is why I'm proud to stand up here today with my colleague, Chairman Sabir, and all of the other elected officials behind me to emphasize that we are going to do everything in our power to ensure that the voters of Philadelphia are able to have their voice heard on November 5th safely and securely. Thank you. Thank you. Right now I'm going to call up District Attorney Larry Krasner. 
Good morning. I'm going to ask a couple people to come and stand with me here, and then I'm going to tell you why. They are first assistant Robert Listenby, who is to my left. They're also Vinnie Corrigan and Matt Stiegler, both of whom are senior attorneys in the office. The reason they are up here is that our office has undertaken to do better and to do more in terms of election protection than we have ever done. The Philadelphia DA's office for many, many years has been responsible for co protecting election day and then responsible for protecting counting of the vote and then responsible for the extended period of mail-in voting or drop box voting. Well, we knew this year was a year when in a swing state special protection was necessary. Violence against any candidate of any party is completely unacceptable in a free society. Efforts to stop people from voting regardless of their conscience, regardless of their candidate, regardless of their party, party, are completely unacceptable in a free society. It makes no difference what those people believe or what they stand for. We need to have elections where people vote, and they vote in bigger and bigger and bigger numbers. We need to have elections that are free, final, and fair. And that is why I'm introducing you today to the folks who are standing behind me because we have been working now for months to do election protection, to push back on the possibility of domestic terrorism, to push back on whatever efforts there are to intimidate people on and before and after election day. We have been on this now for months, and the urgency is only heightened by the horrifying news that we have over the weekend about the attempted assassination of one of the candidates for president, Donald J. Trump. It is completely unacceptable. This office will not only do everything in its power to prevent the possibility of political violence, disenfranchisement, uh, miscount, or any other shenanigans around this vote, but we will, as we have in the past, vigorously prosecute anybody who comes to Philly with the intention to undermine the election. A quick reminder, a couple guys thought it made sense to bring an AR-15. Sound familiar? An AR-15 to where votes were being counted in the last presidential election, they are now felons. They are now convicted. They are now under supervision of the court. And we have jail cells, and we have handcuffs, and we have Philadelphia juries for anybody, I don't care what your party is, I don't care what you believe in, who thinks that we can turn a free, final, and fair election into something else. I'm gonna stop now and step back. There's a lot of great speakers here you need to hear. But I want you to know we have another announcement coming and it is coming likely in the next 30 days about the steps that we are taking as we work every day closely with these wonderful election commissioners, with the FBI, with ATF, with the Philadelphia police, with the state police, and with all other law enforcement entities who are charged with the same thing, which is the protection of every vote. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to now hear from the Philadelphia Democratic Chairman, Congress, former Congressman Bob Brady. Thank you, Omar. Thank you for doing this. You know, it's a disgrace that we're here. It's really wrong. Believe me, running for public office is not easy to do. I've done it 14 times. You scrutinize your family, rightfully so, the press do that. You got to get out there and push yourself for, for criticism every single day when you're out there on the stump. And then to get out there on a hot day, campaign in which he has every right to do, and for one inch, for one inch, could have been killed. That's an absolute disgrace. I, in my heart and my prayers are out for him. And not only him, how about his family? Hey, Dad, why are you doing this? We don't need to be doing this. My family. Hey, why are you doing it? Your family. Well, anybody's elected official say, why do you have to do this? And now he's out there doing it because he wants to be president of the United States. There's nothing wrong with that. People are allowed to do that. That's the American way. But to get shot at and almost killed, that's an absolute disgrace. And as our, and as our district attorney said, by, by a, a long-range automatic rifle that only, only law enforcement and military should have. Maybe we can figure about and do something about that. And then how about that other man, the... the uh, the, the firefighter, the auxiliary firefighter, out there with his family, supporting his candidate, who he thought would be the best candidate. He's out there and he heard shots and he covered over and, and covered his family to protect him and he got killed. It's absolutely senseless and there's no place, nowhere, anywhere in this world, in this United States, that we should have to do this. But again, 
It happens, and we need to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Everybody has a right to run for office. Everybody, no matter what you're running for, no matter who you are. But nobody has a right to get shot, and nobody has a right to put themselves out there. So again, Commissioner, thank you for doing this, and maybe, hopefully, we can get some sensibility also, not only for what's happening, but all for these automatic rifles. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to call uh, Chairman of the Election Board in Montgomery County, Neil Makajata. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Please don't forgive me. You can pronounce your name right. We'd like to call Neil from uh, Marco, the Chair of the Elections for the Board of Elections in Montgomery County. Sorry. No. Agent, no worries. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Neil Makija. We'll work on it, no worries. Um, I'm chairman of the Board of Elections of Montgomery County, county commissioner in Montgomery County, and I just wanna thank uh, Chairman Sabir for organizing this today. Thank you, District Attorney Krasner, for your leadership, uh, Commissioner Bluestein as well. Uh, it's very important for us to be here recognizing uh, that the threats to our democratic process, the threats to our fundamental rights may arise uh, anywhere, regardless of border, and so, uh, Working together across counties is going to be essential with election officials, with law enforcement, to ensure that every voter, every citizen in our region feels safe uh, in exercising their fundamental rights, whether it's attending a rally, whether it's voting, whether it's being a candidate. Uh, we are all going to work together to make sure uh, that we uphold uh, that basic promise uh, that we are a country that uh, believes in the rule of law, where uh, Democracy itself is a substitute for violence, and the two are incompatible. So I want to note a very important uh, history that many people may not know, which is that in Montgomery County, four years ago on Inauguration Day, uh, there was a drive-by shooting of a campaign office across from our, camp uh, across from our county headquarters. And uh, since then, we learned a number of things. Uh, one, it is absolutely critical that when citizens see evidence of potential violence or experience threats, that they have to report that to law enforcement. In the days leading up to that shooting, uh, there were emails sent to a campaign headquarters claiming that the election was rife with fraud, that it was stolen. And uh, after those emails were shared with law enforcement, uh, unfortunately, it was too late uh, to prevent uh, what happened. But that individual was ultimately prosecuted. It was discovered, uh, their identity was discovered, and they were brought to justice and sentenced uh, to a number of years in prison are now on probation. So as District Attorney Krasner noted, uh, there are actions that have been taken uh, in the past and uh, our law enforcement is preparing to do so, but we need the cooperation uh, and the recognition of all citizens to report any, any behavior that they believe is threatening or could lead uh, to an incident like what happened not just Saturday, uh, but in the past several elections as well. Now, uh, one common thread in recent election violence is also uh, the misinformation that exists in claiming that our elections are rife with fraud. And we as election officials know that elections in Pennsylvania are incredibly secure, that we have paper, uh, paper audits, we have voter verified ballots, uh, we, we engage in a number of safety procedures that ensure that you can trust the results of our elections and that we have election officials from both parties who are ready to stand and verify that going into November. So you will hear from us in the coming weeks about the steps that we will take to ensure that every citizen knows that our elections are secure uh, and that they can trust uh, that process. So I'm going to turn it over in just a moment uh, to Commissioner Sabir uh, in just a second. Uh, but I will also make a comment uh, along the lines of what many of our leaders have said, which is that what happened on Saturday uh, r continues to be investigated. It's very important that we not uh, fall into uh, divided ideological camps trying to find selective information and exacerbate the divisions that already exist in our country, but to let law enforcement do its work to discover what happened, why it happened. 
uh, what is clear to many of us is that a weapon of war should never end up in the hands of a 20-year-old uh, as it did on Saturday. So that is, a, that is an issue that we will also work together uh, as a region to prevent further gun violence. But I want to thank all the leaders up here and thank you, Commissioner Sabir, for your leadership. Thank, thank you. Yes, Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to call up our controller. Christy Brady is here. Thank you, Chairman. Thanks. Thank you, Chairman Brady. Good morning, everyone. First and foremost, my thoughts and prayers are with the family of the deceased, the former president, and those who were seriously injured in Butler, PA. In our diverse and vibrant democracy, differences of opinion are not only inevitable, but essential. They drive progress, foster innovation, and ensure that every voice is heard. However, when these differences escalate into violence, we all lose. We must remember that our strength lies not in our ability to overpower one another, but in our capacity to listen, to understand, and to find a common ground. True power comes from the courage to engage in peaceful dialogue, to challenge ideas with reason and respect, and to stand together in the face of division. Let us all commit to rejecting violence in all its forms. Let us all choose to resolve our differences through conversation, not confrontation. Let us build a future where every individual can express their beliefs without fear where our debates marked, are marked with civility, and where our unity is our greatest strength. Thank you very much. Thank you. And last, but certainly not least, we have Lauren Costello from Committee of 70. Can't say elections without saying Committee of 70. And so we're so honored to have uh, CEO of Committee of 70, the first woman ever to run, lead Committee of 70, Lauren Costello. Thank you to Commissioner Sabir for his leadership and for all of our partners here today at this important moment for our history. Uh, as Commissioner Sabir said, I'm Lauren Costello, the President and CEO of the Committee of 70. We're a 120-year-old nonpartisan nonprofit dedicated to making sure that our elections are free, fair, safe, and secure. There is no place for violence in our politics. Our democracy works better when we earn and hold trust. Trust in our elected officials, in our institutions, and in each other. Right now, leaders across all ideologies and sectors must speak out. They must speak out against violence and in no uncertain terms, commit to peaceful politics going forward. We need to rebuild that trust and continue rebuilding it now through November and beyond. We also encourage everyone to take care in what information they are sharing or amplifying. We all have an important role to play in bringing down the temperature and leading to more peaceful rhetoric and, and stop sharing misinformation. Uh, while we recognize that this moment feels confusing and disturbing, it's on all of us to come together and provide Philadelphians with the resources and support they need to feel confident and safe in our institutions and this upcoming election. The Committee of 70 has excellent resources that help people work out their differences and to come to consensus. For these resources or to join our effort, please uh, visit the Committee of 70 and help us bring about the vibrant democracy we need and deserve. This event should only further our resolve to foster and cultivate a healthy democracy. It is truly the only way forward. Thank you. Thank you. And just to reiterate, the elections here in Philadelphia have always been simple, safe, and secure, and they will always be. I had long conversations with Mayor Parker over the weekend. She sent her staff here. Uh, she's fully on board to make sure, the citizens of Philadelphia, that we will have simple, safe, and elections as we always have been. 
We had long conversation with Commissioner Bethel and other law enforcement agencies. So we want the message to be clear that it's safe for you to vote in Philadelphia, it's safe for you to serve as a poll worker, it's safe for you to do voter registration drives. We're about democracy here, and no one can stop democracy. And I want the citizens of Philadelphia to always remember that the more you vote, the more you get. And let's remember, one Philadelphia, our Mayor Parker has always reminded us about that. One Philadelphia, United City. Thank you.